remind you again what is linearizability. Linearizability say that there exists a legal history S such that S is equivalent to T and that legal history preserve the real time order of operations. Linearizability implies sequential consistency. This part of the condition is sequential consistency. And we know that linearizability is compositional. So for all registers, if the trace restricted to a register is linearizable, then it is also linearizable for the whole trace, including the multiple registers. Now what we are going to do is to reorder events according to logical time when they occurred. And as we said before, we break ties by using process identifiers. So we are taking the real time trace and we mapping it to what we call a logical time trace. And we call that trace TLT. So here what we have done, this event happens at logical time five. So it is the first event. Then comes this event, which happens at logical time 10. Then we have the response of the blue right. And this happens at logical time 13. Then we have the response of the green right, which happens at logical time 13, but at process 3. And then we have the invocation of the read at logical time 18 and the response of the read at logical time 24. If you look to this logical time trace, you notice that, so this is T, you notice that the green right and the blue right are concurrent in this logical time trace, but they are not concurrent in the real time trace. And the linearizability holds because we can find this sequential execution, which does first the green right and then the blue right, and then the read value of the blue right. And that's why we get the value of 5. So let's look at the properties of logical time trees. So if we restrict the real time trees to each, to the view of each process, PI in this case, we can see that the order between events is maintained in the logical time trace. Because as we know, logical time preserves process order. So the logical time trace preserves process order. And therefore, the logical time trace and the real time trace are equivalent according to the definition of equivalence. The view of each process is the same in T and T logical time, LT. And what that means, it means that if T, the real time trace, is sequentially consistent, then LT is also sequentially consistent and vice versa. They are, why is that? Because one is sequentially consistent if there exists a legal history and we know that whatever legal history you get, so you get equivalence between the two traces. Now, taking all these together, we know the following. We know that if we can prove that for any register, the logical time trace restricted to that register is linearizable, we know then that the logical time trace as a whole is linearizable. And because linearizability implies sequential consistency, we know then that the logical time trace is sequentially consistent. Because of this equivalence that we have here between sequential consistency of real time and logical time, we know that sequential consistent logical traces implies sequentially consistent real time traces. And we have achieved our result. So the execution will be sequentially consistent. So we can reason then compositionally and complete the proof. So what we have to do now, we must show that for each execution and for each register, the logical time history restricted to that register is linearizable. And what this requires, it requires that there exists a legal history, S, and S is equivalent to the logical time history restricted to register X, R, and S preserves order of non-overlapping operations in the logical time history restricted to XR. 
And we do this again by constructing a sequential history or trace and then show that it has the required property. We have done this before when we proved the linearizability of multiple right and multiple literals algorithm. So let us just show how to construct this sequential history. So here is the sequential history that we are going to construct. We know what's the timestamp of an operation. This is the timestamp used in the update phase. So we construct S from a logical time trace or history in the timestamp order. It means we order writes according to their unique timestamps and we order reads immediately after write with the same timestamp and for reads with the same timestamp we order them according to the increasing logical time of invocation step. Here we use logical time observed. This construction is very similar to the one that we have done before for linearizable registers. As you can see S is legal by construction. So that's what we have done here. As we have seen here, the blue right has a logical time 10. The green right has a logical time 5. In fact, it was process 3, but we don't care about the process here. And the read has a logical time 10. So we take this right and we order it first. Then we order this right. And then we order this read. So this is our sequential history. So we must do that for each execution now and for each register that holds that we are working on that now. And this requires that we have a linear history and that history is equivalent to the logical time history. And then this sequential execution preserve order of non-overlapping operations in the logical time trace or history. Let's assume for a second that, that we have proved that S preserves the non-overlapping order of executions as the logical time trace or history. Now we prove that S is equivalent to the logical time history restricted to the register. Why is that? They are equivalent. So why is that? They contain the same events and they contain non-overlapping operations. That's fine. But the order of operations in the logical time history is the same as it is in the sequential history because of logical time. So the sequential history or trace is equivalent to the logical time history of trace. Now, the proof of this condition S preserves non-overlapping order of operation as the logical time trace or history. We have proved that before. It is very similar to the proof that we have done for linearizable registers. So we will skip this in the lecture. Hence, we now we know that the logical time history restricted to any trace is linearizable and therefore the whole history, in this case, the real time history is sequentially consistent. So this ends the section on sequentially consistent algorithms. As we know, the set of all traces that are linearizable are contained in the set of all traces that are sequentially consistent. However, what we have shown is a set of all traces that are bigger than linearizable traces that are still sequentially consistent, but it does not include all the traces that are sequentially consistent. In fact, so we are restricting sequential consistency to get this compositionality condition. So, so what are the conditions we are getting here? A trace or a history is sequentially consistent that our algorithm produces satisfies the following property. If we have a write operation on register X and a read operation on register X, and in fact, the write happens before that read in, of course, the real time trace. If that is the case, then in our sequential trace also, the write will be before the read. Another condition that we have is that if we have a read operation that precedes a write operation, 
it is impossible for this read to return the value of the right so it is impossible to read the future or to read values written in the future some sequentially consistent traces actually can allow this silly behavior but this is not the case with our algorithm to end this lecture just to summarize we have seen single writer linearizable registers with a write that takes one round trip and a read that takes at most two round trips and we have this fault tolerance that majority has to survive we have seen a linearizable multi-writer algorithm where the write takes two round trips the read takes two round trips and now we have seen a sequentially consistent algorithm that gives only one round trip for writes and two round trip for reads and this is believed to be optimal